So a couple weeks ago, I posted a video showing how to use Keyboard Maestro in conjunction with the 1Password command line tool to auto-concatenate one-time passwords, or passcodes, I should say, with static passwords from 1Password Vault. The reason why we wanted to do that is because the OpenSense firewall admin page does not have a dedicated field for typing in the one-time passcode when you're logging in to an OpenSense firewall account. And so the way that the 2FA works with OpenSense is you need to concatenate your one-time passcode with the regular password and then paste it in as a single string in this password field right here and then it lets you in. So just to recap, we'll run that macro that we did. And you see here, now in the clipboard, we have the concatenated password and I just type in my name, log in, and I'm in. So while that works, that's better, certainly better than going into one password and manually copying and pasting. I felt that it, we could do better than this because it's kind of a pain in the butt to have to type in the username and then paste the password in. Uh, first world problems, right? Um, so I came up with an improved version of the macro. So let's disable this and let's say enable this new one called autofill. So this macro is a modification of what we did before, except in this case, we're actually auto-filling the password. We don't have to do any copying and pasting or anything like that. I don't have to click in the field to activate it, none of that. We can use Keyboard Maestro to do that. So let's run this new and improved version of the macro so you can see it in action. So up in the menu bar, we'll click that and run the auto-fill OpenSense password macro. And you can see it auto-filled the password and it logged me in with a single click of a button, just like the 1Password extension, except this was all done via Keyboard Maestro. So Keyboard Maestro has actual built-in methods of interacting with web forms. So if you go to the wiki here, it will show you all the different ways to do that. So the way it does that is that you can address specific elements in the HTML via JavaScript and either fill in the field or click the button or anything you want to do. So let's look at the macro now. So now I've got these macro actions here called set front browser field. And then we have an execute JavaScript. Let's look at these first. So you can see here that this is where we autofill the username and the password based on the information we get out of the shell script. So this is a slight modification of the script we used in the previous macro. So what's going to happen now is instead of me having to type in my username and then going to the password field and pasting it in, we're going to tell Keyboard Maestro, just fill in this field on the web page with this information and then do the same thing for password field. So how do we know what form field to address? That's pretty simple. If you open up, in this case, Chrome, let's go back to the login page here. What we're going to do is we want to get the actual under the hood, the HTML element to address. So in this case, we're going to select the username field and right click on it and go inspect. And so this pops up the inspector for the page and it by default will select the element on the page that you invoke the inspect element command on. You can see it's username field. So if you right click on this, highlight the element and go to copy and copy JS path. Uh, just a side note, that copy JS path, for some reason, Safari, at least as of this recording, that's not an option when you go into inspect element mode. I'm not sure why. Maybe there's a trick to that I don't know of, but in Safari, this won't show up. So that's why I'm doing it in Chrome. But you want to copy the JS path, the JavaScript path to this element. And let's open up a text edit window. And so we have something to paste into. So if you paste, this is what we get. Okay. And then let's do the same thing for the password field. So we right click in the field here, go inspect. And then here we right click, copy JS path, and we'll paste it into text edit here. And then that's the password field. And then the other item on the page we want to interact with is this login button. So we don't have to manually click it. So in this case, we'll right click on that button. Again, choose inspect and do the same. We'll right click, copy JS path. So these are three elements that we want to interact with on the page. So if we go back to the macro now, now you can see using this set front browser field macro action, we can say set this field, specific field in the web page, to this value. 
In this case, it's my username. Same thing with the password field. So we'll set the field to that, the password field. And in this case, we're referencing a variable. So you can see these percent sign syntax in Keyboard Maestro is how you reference variables. So it, this variable is actually a named clipboard called temp. You can see here. And that comes from the output of the shell script here. So we ran the shell script and the output of the shell script gets saved to a named clipboard that I call temp. So this named clipboard is actually a separate clipboard. It's kind of a private clipboard to Keyboard Maestro. So it doesn't, uh, you don't mess around with the system clipboard. So I save the data there because I don't want to adulterate whatever may be in the system clipboard. Um, but that's where that data is from. So we're referencing the password that was echoed out to the temp clipboard. And then using that as the information to virtually type into that password field. And then down here, you can see the execute JavaScript in front browser, which is a different action. In this case, you're actually going to like click on something. And we, but we use the same syntax, the JavaScript syntax to that element. And that's where we're getting it from here. So in this case, we're actually going to add this click method to the end of this selector here, query selector. And we're going to tell Keyboard Maestro, we want to click that button, not just select it. And then here, we have a thing that just basically flushes the temp clipboard, the named clipboard. Even though this temp clipboard is a named clipboard and it's private to Keyboard Maestro, you still want to clear things out just for security reasons. You don't want old data, especially passwords, hanging out in the uh, clipboard like that. Okay, so now that we've got that set up, and so what's great about that is you notice that this works for the front browser, whatever browser is in the foreground. So you don't have to really target a specific browser for this since you're just telling Keyboard Maestro to find elements in the HTML page. It doesn't matter what browser you're using. So that's the nice thing about this macro is that it works in all browsers. But there is one caveat. In order for it to work in a browser, you need to allow the browser to be controlled by Keyboard Maestro. So by default, the browser will not allow you to do that. So in Chrome, you're going to go to View, Developer, and then make sure this Allow JavaScript from Apple Events is enabled. Otherwise, this script will not work because the browser will block it. In Safari, uh, you're going to have to uh, enable the Developer menu up here, which is off by default. But if you go to the Settings menu and then go to Advanced tab, down here, make sure this checkbox is enabled, and then this Develop menu will appear. In the develop menu, you go down to allow JavaScript from Apple events. And then it'll give you a big scary warning. So you do need to be careful about this option being enabled because uh, bad things can happen. But that's the only way Keyboard Maestro and other tools that do browser automations can work. So uh, just be careful when you use it. Okay, so now we can run the macro on Safari. And it autofills with no other user interaction needed. You just have to click that one macro thing and it logs in. So that's a huge improvement over the previous macro. This actually acts like the one password extension. It just logs you in, does the auto concatenation of the one time password and clicks the button for you. And it works in all browsers. So now let's do it in Chrome. And there it goes. So that's a nice way that you can take advantage of browser form actions in Keyboard Maestro to emulate the autofill of one password.